and I um, painted around the outside of this. Now remember when you paint, wherever you paint is where the um, copper is going to be. So it's part of your design process, basically. Um, you're painting this graphite paint. And I want to take it down onto here. It's just, it's really just kind of, um, the, like I said, it's just really artsy. However I want this to look. Wherever I want my copper to attach is where I'm going to paint this graphite paint. How much of that paint do you put? Like a thin coat? A thin coat is great. You don't need to have a lot. But what you do need to have is coverage. And so when you have something that is really shiny, like say this glass bead right here, the difference, you can see the difference here. This is less shiny. This has got more of a dull finish and that one's more shiny. Um, the, sometimes those shiny surfaces don't take paint really well as far as coverage wise. So you want to let it dry and then go back and look at it and make sure that there's um, anything that um, is not covered is you can go back and, and recover with it so um, so that you have uniform plating with that so here's this is um this is what i this is what i've painted so far right here let's see how this is doing that's plating really well. And that plating process, that was up really high. So the whole this particular um, piece was plating at, a, I had it at a 1.5, so about you know one and a half, and it goes up to a two. So for this piece, that was probably pretty high amperage, um, pretty high power for um, something that size. And I think to answer the question that came in earlier, can you turn it up and have a plate faster? Um, that kind of demonstrates that, yeah, yeah, you can, but it's not, it's not as uniform as a slower um, plating would give you. So um, you can see the differences there. Nice and shiny up in this area, but um, not so much down in here. And I really believe it has to do completely with um, the power. So that's a great um, example of what that's how that does did you uh, have a question a question uh, that came in can you stamp the graphite paint to a non-stick surface and later peel that off say that again can you stamp the mm -hmm. graphite paint to a non-stick surface and later peel that off oh so that what's the pur is the purpose what's the purpose i guess that's the question i have is like Let i think know. you the graphite, okay, I'm trying to understand the application here because if you're wanting to plate something and then you peel it off, you would have like a really thin like film of copper. Is that what we're thinking of? So if you had something like that, I mean, you could try. I think that could be kind of cool. The nonstick surface though, as I'm working through this question in my mind, you wanting to have, you want to have it stay in the acid and so if it's on a non-stick surface ensuring that that the you know the conductivity and everything is is there and uniform um, is what you're going to want to consider so I may need to ask my expert friends on this one <laughs> that's a good question I think I will I think I'll come back with that one so I'll have to write that question down and let you know tomorrow anything else at the moment Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a feather. We're going to um, start the whole feather process. Let's see. Now, the reason I'm get being a little bit picky on this is basically container size. And this is what we're going to use. Um, so, I've got my feather right here. I'm going to get my water-based varnish, and I'm really going to get this nice and uh, lacquered up. So I'm going to rinse that off and get that kind of wet. Okay, so 
this is going to um, be ready for us to uh, plate tomorrow. And I love the way feathers work. Um, I, I'm just such an organic material fan. I just, I think things like shells and seeds and um, feathers just really lend themselves really well to this, this whole process. Okay, so one side, make sure you get both sides. Um, this one was, obviously you saw it was dyed. That doesn't matter as long as you just get the lacquer on the top of it, but it can, on the surface that you're lacquering on, you could, you might be able to, you know, transfer the color onto something. So I've got a piece of paper here. All right, so once you've got the lacquer on it, I'm gonna rinse that off. You're gonna wanna come through and kind of pick it apart. Let me put the lid on that. And you want, you want this however you want it to dry. You're going to bring those, those uh, wispy parts of that feather. Debbie asks, do you make the copper sulfates from a powder? I don't. I haven't done that. Um, I wonder if she's done that before. No, I, I actually just, I get, I get it um, pre-made. Okay. So I'm gonna want, I want to separate these. And doing it the way I just did a minute ago is gonna um, open that up so that I, I know that everything is kind of um, covered in that lacquer. So that's, that's the first step right there of working with a feather. Um, and here's the thing too is like you want, to me there's a bit of artistry with it. You want to be thinking, you know, what is a really pretty shape? How do I want this to really look? And you know, make it look fairly natural. And then, since I'm going to be plating this in copper, how, um, how can I best help myself, be, you know, help this be successful? So having little pieces sticking out like that um, may not be the best thing to do. So, all right, I'm going to let that sit like that for a minute and um, then take it off the paper before it totally dries on the paper, but I'm going to let it sit for a minute like that. So while we are um, waiting on these other pieces, I do, I just want to keep checking things while we're doing this, since today is really a lot about um, the whole process, getting the process set up. So that's the one where you did both at the same time? This is where I did both at the same time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's looking really good. It's starting pretty well. Now we use the copper, the copper paint on this. So I think it needs to be plating a little bit longer, a little bit better. So I'm gonna put this back in the solution. And that, why is, what do you see there that tells you it should stay longer? Um, it's actually, it's what I'm, I'm seeing more of the copper uh, paint than I am any plating that's going on. And so I need, I need to do some troubleshooting on this um, to make sure that it's actually got the conduct, it's, it's conducting itself well. I, I think in this case, it might be best to separate them this way and use this other copper wire like I was telling you about earlier letting this copper wire be the, um, the conduit. So I'm going to take a heavier piece of copper wire and let's see, I'm going to hang it over the top right here. So I want to cut a piece off.
So as it was before, it could be that within each twist and things, the electricity was being lost, quote it unquote. Was. Whereas yeah. here, then you have one main one, and they both attach to it, and the, ex the electricity will flow through and right. to. Exactly. So this now is going to be what I'm going to attach the power to, um, and I'm going to hang these in there separately. Um, I'm going to make it so one hangs a little lower than the other, just so they're not touching each other. And I've got two different sizes here, so it's not necessarily the best recommendation. I'm not, you know, it would be better just to do the same size, because size matters on this. So, um, where did my, oh, here we go. Uh, this would be good right here. So I've got both of these hooked up, and hopefully that's flowing. Okay, that's touching also, so I'm going to scoot this over. Um, yeah. Getting that all set up. I just want to make sure it's not touching the sides too. All right, we'll check back on that one in a minute. That one's up, but I don't have a current. And so the good thing about um, this particular unit, I have it all the way up, but I don't have a reading on it. So usually you have a red um, pulsing light. And let me show you on this one. Notice how the light is, let's see if I can bring this over, um, the light's pulsing. Mm -hmm. So you see that's telling you that there's a current, there's current with the green and then there's also, it's, um, sh you know, like actually getting through to the other piece. As long as that pulse is going, this one doesn't have that. So um, that's, that's telling me that I don't have power going to um, my pieces in there. So. That's going to be something that I need to troubleshoot um, a little bit later. So. And then we'll, we'll, and then, we'll relay yeah. to you our discoveries. Yes, exactly. A uh, question from, a comment from Bree. Asia always does a wonderful job. Love your classes. Thanks. <laughs> that, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, if you have any final comments or questions for uh, about this, right now is the time to send it in, okay? All right. So as we're putting these, um, getting all of these other pieces together, you basically have a really good idea of how this is going to work. And we're just going to continue with some different examples. Like I said, I'll show you the feather and we can even put together some um, jewelry pieces and um, get, get some of that as, as the course continues. I do, um, I've got another cinnamon stick. I'm going to actually lacquer it tonight and we'll, um, we'll electroform one of these tomorrow as well while we start putting our, um, our piece together so um where let's see i've got this all right so for tomorrow um we're going to start with a container now you don't have to have a container um i i like that just because of um it's just the way i want to aesthetically do it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to start this is the container is what i'm going to put the entire piece in afterwards so i'm going to start with a foam um a piece of foam and and I will definitely show you what that looks like I'll have all the supplies here and um, we're gonna build and then place in but you when you do start um, with your project you're gonna want to have everything in mind of what you know how, what you want to build from the other thing that I wanted to bring in um, I didn't just because I didn't want it to be too confusing though is you could do the same thing and make a wreath so starting with your wreath um, you know what your base is that's what you're also going to be like adding adding your picks and things like that too so um, as you're collecting things um, remember that you want to get some different color involved in it so if we could look at this over here really quick I'm um, I'm definitely a person that likes the fall foliage ideas and I really wanted to stick with something that um, was more in um, this color scheme so I went with yellows and reds and you know did a little bit of color pops here and there. Um, the one we're going to be working on is going to have some um, 
some blues in it. So it's going to be kind of fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that because um, then thinking about if you're, a, if you're a patina fan, you know, how your copper is going to actually color, um, it can come into your design aspect too. So we had a question earlier about could you use liver of sulfur? Definitely. That's going to darken things. It's going to make it nice and shaded. Um, if you wanted to um, actually get some uh, patina paint, there are there's a, a metal metal paints out there that once you plate your piece, you can go over it with um, a colored paint that does react with your copper pieces and then um, make something that's really quite uh, beautiful and unusual with that too. So I'm more of a natural copper person, um, so that I didn't get the patina colors, but I will. Um, I, I always try to think ahead on that and think, well, what, what is it that I want to be um, creating with and doing? So as you're gathering your, um, your pieces, think about what looks complementary. Um, think about how you want to put it together. Um, the other thing is you're going to want to start with, um, you're going to want to be working with odd numbers. So in the piece right there, I've got one main big piece and I've got some other accents there. So just going with some odds um, as you're gathering the pieces and getting ready for um, our the next phase of everything. So um, I'm also thinking that, um, oh, I have a couple of other pieces that are painted here that we could actually get into the solution. So I'll just do a few more pieces and that would be great answering some questions if anybody has them or not. Um, comments are always welcome too. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think we've done a really good job of covering um, the, the initial um, part of electroforming and um, getting things ready for actually assembling, assembling the we, pieces tomorrow. What are we going to learn tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to be um, learning how to take the pieces that have been electroformed and then create little groupings with them so that we can make our own picks. So you're going to be putting the picks into um, the, the bouquet and making, making things from there. The other thing I'm going to be doing is also showing you what else you can do besides that. So not always, like, what we're going to do is we're going to do a card. So it's like a little greeting card. Um, that, that you get to see later. Um, I'm going to actually utilize the feather for that one and um, show you how to attach that to a greeting card so you have something that's a little bit unusual, a little bit nice um, for, uh, for a, a, like a different project that maybe is complimentary. The other thing that you can do too, as you're thinking about this, as if since we're putting together a nice bouquet, if you happen to have like a harvest table and you have guests over for um, like a celebration dinner or whatever, you can also do little name tags. So you can have these little pieces of these little leaves or whatever that you can um, copper plate and create little name cards and um, then attach the copper to the name plates too. So it doesn't have to just be, you know, um, a piece that's sitting in front of you. It doesn't have to just be earrings. There's a lot of things that you can do with the um, pieces that you've copper plated after after you're done with the plating. So, yeah. Debbie wants to know if you've ever done electroplating in silver. I have not. You can do it. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think how that works. Oh, no, there's, there's silver paint. I've not done it with silver. I've not done that. Uh, uh, Ella asks, do you work at home or in a special place? I work at home and I also work out of a couple of different studios. So um, I'm fortunate enough to have an area at my place set up so that I can do this. And it's, um, it's something that I've, I consciously have like created for myself. And then um, there are other art studios that, that I like to work out of too. So yeah. How about a few comments? Okay. Check it going. out. Motivaker3483, so detailed. This has been a great course. I can't wait for tomorrow. Uh, Gwen said, great class, Asia. I missed a lot today, but we'll catch up and see you all back here tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Allison said, Asia, very interesting course. Thank you very much. I learned a lot, and my jewelry sanding was less boring as I listened to you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Island Girl said, thank you, Asia, Nash, Shahar, Curious Mondo crew, and Chatters again and again. Always awesome. Uh, Nancy said, fun class. Looking forward to tomorrow. Thanks to Curious Mondo and Asia and Chatters too. So 
is this a good point for us to, to, to end today's class? Yep, I would say that it is, yes. Awesome. So tomorrow, of course, there's more. Tomorrow we, have, we cover day two, day number two of three of this course, classes four, five, and six. We're going to continue on with our electroplating and then starting, beginning the assembly of the, the assemblage of the, the bouquet, and it's going to be fantastic. I definitely want you back here tomorrow. Uh, I am going to announce the lucky winner for today's giveaway, but before I do that, if you haven't done so yet, be sure to invest in yourself as an artist. Click on that green button below the video that says own this course and think of all the things that you can do as a result of owning this course, how much more they will allow you to do uh, in your arts and, how, and, 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 and who you will become really uh, by adding just a new, new set of skills up to your already awesome skill set. So uh, think of all the things that you can do. If you sell your work, think of possibly if you sell one or two pieces that you might might uh, pretty much cover your investment in this course and it becomes a no-brainer. Uh, listen, listen, it also comes with a supplies list so you know exactly what uh, Asia is using and also in that supplies list if you're interested in this specific unit that she is using. In the supplies list there is a code that you can use and it will give you a discount on the unit and other supplies from that very same website. So um, there's yet another incentive for you to own the course because it will give you additional savings as you're out and, going out and about onto your uh, supplies um, purchases. So uh, know that that is a cool perk that comes with owning this course. And uh, it is 30% off today, the course. So all you have to do is click on that green button below the video that says own this course, get it, and uh, you'll be happy and on your way. You will have lifetime access to this course, so you can access it whenever you are ready to start the electroplating process. And uh, don't forget that you get the supplies list with the code for the discount on the units as well. So uh, you know what to do. Just look for that green button. If you're interested in uh, the Etching with Electricity course, check out the bundle option that will give you both courses for 30% off. And uh, you get to discover and explore that technique as well. So one adds the metal to the item and the other re extracts the metal from the item. It's really cool. Uh, I think it's really cool when you think of it that way. So uh, anyways, if you're interested in the bundle, look for the yellow button below the video, okay? All right, my friends, Mondo Makers, lucky winner for today's giveaway is da -da 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 -da, Debbie Appleman. Congratulations, Debbie. You are the lucky winner. Send us an email to hello at CuriousMondo.com and we'll get your gift card sent out to you. And for all of you Mondo Makers, see you back here tomorrow, same time for day two of classes. Until then. Mina, arigato gozaimasu. Obrigada. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.